two people crawl into two different mental health services. They both have dirt underneath their fingernails from when they clawed their way up, only to find they were still so far beneath rock bottom that the air was too stifling to ask for help. One of the people is offered an outstretched hand and a listening ear. They are given a tea with two sugars, just how they like it, and all the time in the world to tell their story. The room is as warm as the nurse's voice, and every decision is their own choice. The other person is given an unmarked pill bottle and a door that they don't have the key for, a meal they don't like, and a clock counting down to hopelessness. What happens to a person when they are treated as less than human? When they are treated like a tranquilized problem that needs to stay docile and become more prisoner than participant? In services where there are maroon-soaked nail marks in filth-ridden rooms, where restraint bruises are burned into shaking wrists, where people become a watered-down version of themselves. In cities both flourishing and struggling, Mental health services are turning away from respect and refusing to look human rights in the eye. Abuse, both screaming and silent, can be found in all corners of the world. How many times can a person be told they don't matter before they start believing it? This is not a problem tucked away in a shadowy part of the world. It's not a monster under someone else's bed. This is a problem within arm's reach and we already have the instruction manual of how to put humanity into healthcare. There are too few services around the world where people are the heart of policy. These places are few and far between, but they are a shining beacon of hope to those who ask for help. Where professionals ask instead of tell, where professionals treat the person and not just the symptoms. There are services which have been built by the people who once needed them. And clearly marked maps showing you how to step back into the community, allowing the people who asked for help to shape the path back into society. People remember when they are told that they are more than an illness. They will remember the power of their own name and their problems will still be part of them, but not the part that wins. When respect and dignity are at the heart of healthcare, there are no shadowy corners or filth-encrusted beds, no bloody sheets and echoes of confused cries, no workers turning a blind eye. Nobody gets left behind in the dark as corners are cut. When consent is the only non-negotiable thing, we can build a system that heals more than it hurts. The power to save lives has been placed in our palms. You can reach into the tear-stained earth and pull life from the soil. You can be the difference between a life and a body. You can stop another success story from becoming an obituary. So another person doesn't crouch in the shower at the end of the day and try to scrub abuse from their skin. So they can walk back into society with dignity, to a life that they forgot they deserved. When human rights are the foundation of healthcare, you will save more than lives. We will save dreams, memories, passion and purpose. You can stop someone else's time from running out. We can save thousands more stories if we just act now.